Hi again and welcome back. Today I wanted to look into something a little more out of the ordinary. Many music directors, and certainly including myself, spend quite a significant amount of time in front of our doors making tracks or recordings for all kinds of reasons. Now, I started my journey into music technology around 30 years ago playing around with MIDI, but only started using a digital audio workstation, or DAW as we know it today, and using virtual instruments around three years ago. Trying to find a simple, straightforward tutorial, either on YouTube or online in plain English, and that didn't assume you knew a whole host of terminology to start with, was, and I think is, to a certain extent, still a problem. So, in this tutorial, I'm going to use a degree of simplicity in the hope that if you're just starting out, by the time you've got to the end of this video, if you make it that far, you'll at least be able to understand what's been said. I've done a few similar videos and been told I've managed to present them in such a way as they are easy to understand. So then, limited technical terms and apologies in advance if I oversimplify anything. If you find anything I say useful in this video or any other video, do please subscribe by hitting the red button below and leave any comments in the comments section. Now, I don't mind admitting that I am no great expert in this technology, but I know what I need my technology to do. There are many online so-called experts that have all the gear and no idea. We've all witnessed those online. Well, I have a little idea, but certainly not all the gear. But what I do have, I've made it work in the way I need it to. So then, the subject of today's video is orchestral templates. Well, templates within a door that will help you get creating and recording quickly and efficiently and will avoid you getting bogged down in technical problems when you need to be creating. So then, let's make a start. First of all then, what is a template? Well, in simple terms, it's a pre-prepared project with all the instruments, routing and tracks you regularly use that enables you to start recording and composing quickly and avoids you having to set up the instruments in your door each time. Now, I fully understand that some people don't like to use templates. They say it may stifle creativity and that's fine. I just like to have everything at hand when I need to start writing. In fact, not everyone is the same and it's important to recognise that this template works for me. The libraries I use are included in the template and are the ones I use the most. However you wish to build your template, it needs to work for you. And I say that because there are more than one way to skin a cat. Sorry, there is more than one way to build a template. This is my way. Now, most doors do more or less the same thing, but tend to do it in slightly different ways. I use Cubase as my door, and in order to take full advantage of the template I'm going to talk you through, you really do need the Pro version. Without the Pro versions of doors, you're going to be limited, most likely, on the number of tracks you can use. And to fully utilise the massive advantages I feel templates bring, upgrading to your pro version will soon have you creating and composing faster and, like I said, spending much less time on technical issues. I once spent around £100 on an online course on building a template that took over a weekend to complete, but it failed to point out some very critical requirements at the onset and one of them was you're going to require a version of your door that enables you to create over a hundred plus tracks. But you don't need hundreds of tracks. Some templates I have seen built and described online have 500, 800, 1000, 1500 plus tracks in them. Absolutely a waste of time and effort. So why do I say that? Well, if you really want to spend your time creating a template that has a track for every articulation, on every instrument, on every library that you possess, 
go ahead. I've got better things to do with my time. The first thing you need to decide on are which library or libraries do you actually use? Now, I know that might sound a silly question, but I suspect many of you, and I include myself in this, have libraries that we have purchased but don't really use. So, unless you have weeks of available time and want to include everything you've ever purchased, great, get on with it. It will drive you mad and it does take a significant amount of time to build a usable template anyway. So, first and foremost, think about the libraries and the instruments within those libraries you want to include. If you do need any additional instruments you didn't initially include, just add them afterwards and do a save as to the updated template. And before we go any further, let's address this a problem some feel is a problem as to whether to use track instruments or rack instruments. In simple terms, a track instrument is a track that uses one instrument, one MIDI channel, and that instrument is routed direct to your master output, well, initially, and you don't need to concern yourself with any MIDI channels. However, some online tutorials on templates use rack instruments, where each instrument and or articulation has its own MIDI channel. And you end up, I feel, spending a lot of time routing MIDI and ensuring they are set correctly. And then you need to route the outputs individually in order to mix your recorded tracks. To date, I've not seen any evidence that suggests one way uses significantly more or less RAM on your computer than the other. I therefore like to use track instruments. They're just much simpler and load an instance for each instrument and articulation that I use. Oh, and before I go any further, I just need to say that I'm not going to talk about expression maps. That gets a little bit complicated at this stage. And maybe for another video, I want to keep things simple. I wish I was more of an expert on computer technology, but I'm not. However, I use an iMac and this is my iMac specification. RAM is sometimes a concern and the question is asked, how many tracks can you safely run with X amount of RAM? Well, as you can see, I have 40 gig of RAM and can easily run 60 plus tracks, no problem. But of course, a lot of this will depend on the libraries that you're using. You can also see from the specification there that I'm running a 3.6 gigahertz, eight core Intel Core i9 processor. Now that is a relatively fast processor um, and with the 40 gigabytes of RAM that I have so far, no problems whatsoever. One tip though, if you're thinking about buying a Mac and you're adding extra RAM, don't pay Apple for the RAM. It's way overpriced. Get the basic RAM that comes with your machine, as high a processor as you can afford, and then put your RAM in separately. So then, let's take a walkthrough of my current orchestral template. Okay, so what I wanted to do to start with was to show you how quickly a template can open. Now, the template that I'm going to show you through uh, today has got around about 200 tracks in it. Um, and some people feel that, you, why are you waiting for 200 tracks to, um, uh, to open? You could be doing something else because it takes such a long time. No, not this one, and it'll tell you why shortly. So let me just go over to um, open a new project. Uh, master orchestral template and we're going to save it onto my desktop and boom there it is and it opens that quick because a lot of the tracks are disabled more about that in a little while um, and for those of you that use Cubase you'll be saying I don't I'm not showing you the full screen well I don't need to show you the full screen for what I want to demonstrate and we're going to concentrate in this area here um, and primarily, I want to talk about folders because um, folders are sometimes an underutilized facility within any door. And if you're now thinking, well, actually, I don't use Cubase, so this is irrelevant to me, that's not the case. Most doors are more or less the same. 
So um, I, let's talk about folders first of all. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven folders in this particular um, template. So we've got um, a folder full of wind instruments. So if I open that folder now, we'll see that we've got another two folders. And the two um, libraries I tend to use more than anything else tends to be, yeah, both Spitfire Audio ones, not quite sure why, um, Albion One, and I've got BBC Orchestra, the core version of BBC Symphony Orchestra. Um, and w so therefore we've got a folder for each. Now, for those of you that know Albion particularly, you'll know that um, they um, do not have individual clarinets or individual flutes in their woodwind section. They have kind of what we call merged um, instruments or sections together. And they divide their particular um, uh, samples down into groups of high, lows, longs, and shorts, unlike the BBC Symphony Orchestra, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, in this particular instance, we open, we open our winds and we've opened Albion. And here I have laid out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the seven patches that Spitfire Albion One have for woodwinds. And you'll see um, that they are greyed out. And the reason I grey them out is because everything is disabled. That's why the template was opening so quickly. And each time you save a project in a template like this um, and then reopen it, it's only gonna open the samples that are used in the project. Again, that saves a lot of time. Um, so for instance, if I was to highlight Albion, now the disabled function, I particularly, I have to um, um, a key command, which is D. So I press D and that is now open. So I have um, access to high shorts. If I then hit the uh, low, um, low longs and hit D, it opens, there we go. Not hunting around looking for the correct patch each time. Now that's not the same for BBC Symphony Orchestra because if I open here, we'll see that we have, I'll have to just close a few of these folders we have the various uh, sections, piccolo, flutes, oboes, clarinet, bass clarinets, my favourites, um, and bassoons. Um, so let, let's just take an example for uh, the oboes. And there are the one, two, three, four, five, six oboe patches um, that are supplied with BBC Symphony Orchestra core version. Um, and if we just take oboes long, hit D, the key command I have put to that. Some of these patches do take slightly longer to open and we could play the the oboe long. So you've got instant access to whatever you need. And of course the fact that these the wind winds are um, colour coded blue no relevance whatsoever. It's just the way I like to um, um, organize the colors of various sections of the orchestra. Um, let's just demonstrate the uh, bass clarinets. Open that and we've got uh, three here. Let's go for the, the longs. Um, and every time you open um, a particular um, instrument in the folder, it will stay activated. Save it and it's activated next time you open up that particular project. Um, so winds, then we go to brass. And if I open up the brass, we'll see that we've got my Albion Library, the BBC Symphony Orchestra Library. And I think I've got two or three patches of um, PS, what does that stand for? Performance uh, samples. 
Um, so in this instance, let's open up the BBC Symphony Orchestra and there are the sections, um, sorry, the uh, instruments within the brass section. I don't know, let's take, um, let's take some horns and we'll go for the horns long, hit the delete key, sorry, the D key, should I say. Instant access once again. Um, I also then have um, in the keys section, um, and you'll notice the order that these sections are in are kind more or less the order that you would see in a full score of any orchestral score. So winds at the top, then the brass, then I've put keys and percussion um, and strings at the bottom. Um, so in my particular keys folder, I've got a harp. Yeah, I don't know why I put a harp in the keys, but but what I do, let's just open that. There we go. It's, it really is as quick as that. Uh, it's a Celeste, which is uh, a BBC Symphony Orchestra um, um, instrument again. That's not so good. Um, I then have, oh, this is another library, the most underused library, I think, ever, or underrated library, um, is Garriton. What happened to Garriton? Um, um, the harpsichord and a Steinway piano. The Steinway piano will take a little bit longer to open, no doubt, because of the size of that particular instrument. <laughs> Um, then we go down into the percussion section, which I've coloured colored for some reason brown. Again, we've got Albion, BBC Symphony Orchestra. Let's open Albion and let's um, let's look at some of this um, Darwin percussion in here. Uh, that's quite a big instrument. So let's open that and what do we get? As far as BBC Symphony Orchestra is concerned, there's a quite a bit in their percussion section, as you can see there. Uh, let's just close that. And then finally we come down, well not quite finally, we come down to the strings. Um, and here I've got um, the Alvin strings. There they all are. And I've put a, a, the legato patches in a, a separate folder, just for simplicity really. As far as I'm concerned, let's look at some uh, pizzica. No, let's look at the, uh, the spiccato because they are particularly good. Uh, well, I think they are. Um, I've also got, what else we've got? Uh, um, an, an aperture library. I think that's Spitfire Audio as well. Um, I've got some solos, but the only solo I've got actually is the Tina, is it Tina Geo? Geo? She's very good anyway. Um, and the folder then I have at the bottom um, is um, choir. And then finally, um, I've got a miscellaneous folder and you can keep adding to this. Um, and I think the last project that I used, um, used um, Indian Discovery Series. Um, I've got an accordion in there. I've got uh, some electric guitars and some, um, let's have a look at that 12 string guitar. What was that? Yeah, enough of that. Um, so the folders, the colours, the disable function, the order of the tracks I have covered. Um, like I said earlier on, think very hard about the libraries that you actually use and introduce those. Um, 
we then have uh, this groups section at the, at the bottom because each section of or more or less each section of the orchestra i then group into group channels we're getting a little bit technical now i know um, and i separate the strings uh, the short strings from the long strings that's why we've got some extra um, uh, group channels down there um, and they will then also be rooted into reverb one and reverb two not going to go there just before i finish showing you through this however i want to go to the top and you will see i've got a marker track um sometimes useful for, for putting little descriptions I, i'm sure you know um, um uh, doors like logic and ableton have similar sort of things I put markers are basically um, um, ways to indicate a particular section of a recording. Um, I've got a signature track because not everything is in 4-4. Four four. Although when you listen to some music, you'd think it is. Um, and also got a tempo track. And right at the very top, I have got a couple of sketch pianos. Um, and I just basically use this for just for sketching out various arrangements um, before I then start to orchestrate them. I hope that has given you some insight into how templates can assist in your creativity by saving a great deal of time. Then when you purchase a new library, you just add it to your existing template and do a save as to the updated version of your template. You might want to consider a different template for each style of music that you're working. This is an orchestral one, but you might arrange and record a lot for a jazz ensemble, for instance, or a theatre company that uses a small band that you record click or backing tracks for. Do let me know in the comments box if you felt this was useful and would like me to go into more detail and actually show you how I build the template I've just shown you step by step. I hope you found this walkthrough useful. Keep creating and I'll see you next time.